Come in. Welcome. Welcome to the Mystery Theater. I am Hyman Brown. Pro tali numismati tali machis. So said the philosopher. And it means simply, you get what you paid for. Well, one hesitates to argue with ancient wisdom, but that isn't necessarily so. There are times when you get less than you paid for, which is bad. But there are times when you get more than you paid for, and that can be even worse. Alex. Mm. <clears throat> mm? Oh. Alex, wake no, up. What? what? Marcy? <clears throat> Marcy, do you know what time it is? I think it's four o'clock. Four o'clock in the morning? What? Hey, Marcy. What? what are you doing? That's a gun. I know. What has gotten into you? Hey, hey, you're pointing a gun at me. What, why, why do you want to point a gun at me? Marcy. Our mystery drama, Let the Buyer Beware, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Joan Lovejoy. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It has become one of America's major outdoor and even indoor sports, this thing called the flea market. Every Sunday, seemingly endless processions of station wagons, vans, pickups, trailers, and whatnots head for crowded meeting places where antiques, semi-antiques, not quite antiques, and just plain junk are destined to change hands. We invite you to wander about this particular flea market with our heroine, Marcy Virtue. And should you see something tempting, remember, these places operate under a simple rule that was promulgated by the ancient Romans. Caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. Hi. Can I help you? Well, I... I'll... notice you've been looking at the lamp. That's nice. It could be a genuine Tiffany lamp. Uh, it's, it's very pretty. And very reasonable, considering. Actually, um, I, I was wondering about the table. The table? The table, the lamp, and the books are resting on. Oh, oh, the table. Yes, it, it is for sale, isn't it? Well, uh, sure. Well, how much do you want for the table? Well, say, um, 50 bucks. How much? Listen, 25 and you got a deal. Alex? Alex? Mm -hmm. Alex, wake up. What? Mm -mm -hmm. Alex? What? Marcy, what's the matter? Alex, I, I simply have to talk to someone. Uh, do, you, do you know what time it is? I think it's two o'clock. Oh, two o'clock in the morning. But I have to talk to you. Two o'clock? About what? My conscience. <clears throat> Your conscience? Yes, Alex, my conscience. Oh, go to sleep. Alex, I did something unethical today. Oh, darling, it's two o'clock in the morning. Alex, I cheated a man today. <laughs> you what? I cheated him, knowingly, deliberately. <sighs> How? Uh, come on downstairs and I'll show you. Now? Right this minute. Oh, Marcy. Please, Alex. Oh, boy. All right, so, so... But don't you see? What am I supposed to see? This. Huh? This, this table. What about it? What about it? Oh, Alex. Well, it's just some little, little, little two-by-four table. To begin with, it is not a two-by-four table. It happens to be 36 inches long by 32 inches wide, mm -hmm. and it has this drawer in the center. Yeah, and it's also two o'clock in the morning. Alex, please. I feel that I'm going through a moral crisis here. Why? I know I cheated that man. Uh, how? 
I only paid him $25 for it. $25 for this table? Yes. In that case, he cheated you. No, he didn't know what he had. Look closely at this table. Well, tell me what you see. It's an, it's, it's an old, battered, beat-up piece of junk. And that's all you see? Honey, as this actress say, well, whatever her name used to say, uh, that's all there is, there isn't any more. Ah, but there is a great deal more. Such as? Well, in the first place, it's handmade. Do you agree? Well, I agree. It's either handmade or manufactured in such a way as to make it look handmade. In the second place, it happens to be a Ridvors Tachinka. A what? A trysting table. Look, 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 I'm still lost, and it's still two o'clock in the morning. No, five after. You, you remember Professor Pultoko? No, no. He, he lectured at the club. Oh, oh yeah, the one, the one looked like a goat. Oh, please, Alex, be serious. Yeah, he even smelled like a goat. He no. is the world's greatest authority on the folklore of the lower Carpathian Mountains. Oh, and now it's going on ten after two. Well, you remember how he described the Ridvors Tachinka? Uh, no, I was asleep. Well, luckily, one of us was awake. Man, I wish I was asleep right now. Pay attention. Oh. He described it in minute detail, the exact size, the exact shape, the way it was stained, a, a unique shade of brown, because of the dastanya, the, the varnish, which is only found in the province of Urbanix, huh? manufactured according to a secret formula over a thousand years old. Surely you remember. Uh, yes, uh, yes, if it was yesterday. I, I know it's a Ridvor Tachinkov table, a, a trysting table. I know it. The minute I saw it, uh, on that split second, I got that feeling in my bones. Uh, yeah, look, oh, oh, all right, darling. Okay, it's a uh, red, uh, uh, whatever. Okay, well, now get back to bed, huh? Do you know what it's worth? Well, I'm sure it's... In a... all those tiny villages, if you had a marriageable daughter, you went out and bought a trysting table. Oh, honey, can't we talk about Actually, this Actually, you had to rent or borrow one somehow. Do you know why? Why? Because of the varnish. The varnish? It's the varnish that gives the table its sort of uh, mystic quality. But the varnish makers have become a dying breed, so the tables are now exceedingly rare. They should be worth, oh, well, Professor Pultaka said, if you can find one, you can name your own price. Oh, well, yeah, yes, dear. Now, look, let's Look get, at uh, this table. Think of the romance. See, if you had a daughter you wanted to marry off, you would write down the amount of her dowry and put it in the drawer. Mm -hmm. Then her suitor would come by, open the drawer, read about the dowry, and if he wanted to marry her, he would write out a marriage proposal and pin it to the dowry. And that's what the red vorchinka means. Mm -hmm. A little union of love and money. Oh, what am I going to do about Mr. Bowler? Uh, oh, uh, who's Mr. Bowler and where does, he, where does he come into this? Well, that's what the sign on his station wagon said. Charlie Bowler, Antiques and Curiosities, Ronaville, PA. Well, I, what do you have to do about him? I, I stole the table from him. But you said you paid him $25. To buy something from someone for $25 when you know it can be worth 25000 amounts to stealing. Yeah, look, look, darling, darling, look, you're dealing with, uh, with blind items in a volatile marketplace. Even so... Where the rule is, caveat emptor. That means let the buyer beware. Yeah, well, then we should also say caveat vendator. Let the seller beware. Well, I don't care what you say or how you justify it. It simply isn't right. Uh, look, 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 I'll tell you what to do. Tomorrow morning, you drive down to Ronerville, Pennsylvania, wherever that is, and you look up this fellow, Charlie Bowler, whoever he is, and say to him, this is a priceless antique, and I had no business buying it for a song, so take it back. Now, would that make you feel better? No. Uh, then where are we? Maybe I... I'm just being silly. Yeah, at 2.15 in the morning. Here's what I'll do. If and when I decide to sell the table, I'll split with him. Well, that's very generous of you. Well, I feel I should send him a little something. Oh, good. And now can we go back to bed? We're going to have a special evening at the club, and I intend to show the table 
And we shall invite Professor Pultoka to give a little talk. Won't that be marvelous? Oh, fantastic. Oh, I can't wait to see the look on Sally Bridgman's face <laughs> with her superior patronizing ways. Alex, what are you looking at? I, I tell you, it will be a supreme moment of triumph. Yeah. Uh, Marcy, do you want to sit down for a minute? Oh, good heavens, what for? It's almost 2.15. We should be getting back to bed. <laughs> Darling, I, uh, <clears throat> I think I should tell you something. At breakfast, Alex, I'm really getting very sleepy. Uh, Marcy? I'll call that supercilious Sally Bridgman's first thing after breakfast. Uh, no, no, you better not. I'll say, Sally, dear, guess what I found. Marcy, don't call her. What? Don't call anyone. Alex, what are you saying? A thing like this, and I'm supposed to keep it a secret? Well, I'm afraid so. Why? Uh... I'm very afraid that you made a mistake. A mistake? Yes, yes, a very understandable mistake. Alex, what are you saying? Uh, it's a very plausible mistake, but I'm afraid this table is not a uh, red... Red Vortachinka. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But it has to be. It, it fits the exact description. Well... Alex, what are you trying to do? I know what it is. Yeah, well, so do I. Darling, I'm sorry. But if you look very closely on the inside of this leg... Hmm? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's right, that's right. Now, you see this little thing here that says Spurling Furniture, Battle Creek, Michigan? Oh, no. It... it can't. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Marcy. But I was so sure. How could I have been so sure? Well, you know, maybe in a sense you were right. You see, furniture designers look all over the world for ideas... And maybe this one used the idea of a southern Carpathian trysting table as a model, hmm? It, it isn't real. Well, it's a very nice little table. No, no, honestly, it really is. And, and it's certainly worth the money. My goodness, any time you can get anything at all for $25 these days, you'd grab it. But it still isn't real. Come upstairs, Marcy. It's late. No, you go ahead. I'll be up in a while. Alex? Hmm? What? Uh, Alex, wake up. Oh, again? Oh, Marcy. Well, do you know what time it is, huh? I think it's four o'clock. Four o'clock in the morning? Mar Marcy. Hey, Marcy, what are you doing? Alex, it's, I... It's a gun. You, you're pointing a gun at me. What has gotten... What's gotten into you? Why do you want to point a gun at me? Where'd you get it, Marcy? I found it. Well, how do you know it isn't loaded? Well, I, I don't. Don't point it at uh, well, me. I only want to show you what I found. Uh, l l l listen to me, Marcy. Just lower your hand, huh? And place the gun on the night table. <sighs> yeah, that's fine. Now, what is this business? I found that gun. Oh, 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 only you, only you could find a gun, to be precise. A revolver. Hmm. Looks like thirty-two caliber. At four o'clock in the morning. Uh, where'd you find it? Well, I can hardly believe it. Just tell me the facts, and then we'll decide whether to believe it or not. Now, where did you find the gun? In the table. The table you bought today? You know, the drawer in the middle. It was in the drawer? Well, how could that be? Well, it wasn't in that drawer. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, no. No, it was in another drawer. What other drawer? There is no other drawer. Oh, that's what I thought, too. But after you went upstairs, I stayed there, and I, I kept looking at the table. And I took out the drawer, and it looked sort of uh, short. So I reached in, and there was a little spring... And this other drawer appeared, and inside was this gun, this, this revolver. And there's a name inscribed on it. Here, let me see. It says, Evander Sutcliffe, Turnwood, P.A. Hmm. Well, evidently he kept his gun in a secret drawer. And no one else knew it, even when the table was sold. Yeah, let me look at this thing. Whew. Boy, it is very foul. It was fired, never cleaned. Fired? Yeah, twice. Uh, two of the chambers still have the empty shell cases. Uh, the other four have the live bullets. Then he he fired the gun twice and just put it away in the secret drawer. Yeah, yeah. 
Why would he do that? Why would anyone put a gun away in this condition? Well, it's not our problem. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, why? Because it's our gun. No, it isn't. Why not? I bought it. You had no right to buy it. The man sold me the table, and therefore everything that was in the drawer or drawers belongs to... No, no, darling, darling, darling. While it was legal for the man to sell you the table, it was illegal for him to sell you the gun. Now, you just can't keep this gun. We have laws. You need a license. Hmm. This gun. Why was it in a secret drawer? Uh, Well, that is beside the point. Well, aren't you even curious? Why was it fired and put away? Marcy, we are compelled by law to turn this revolver over to the police. There is no other alternative. Oh, yes, there is. I can return it to its rightful owner. You must admit, Marcy is a woman of alternatives. So we're not going to have a story about a southern Carpathian trysting table after all, which is a pity. But evidently, we do have a story about an everyday artifact, mass-produced in Battle Creek, Michigan, which contains a secret drawer in which was hidden a revolver which had been fired and never cleaned. We may have some more shooting in Act Two. As they say, fortune is like glass. The brighter the glitter, the more easily broken. And so, just as everything that shines is not gold, neither is every well-used old-looking table a genuine antique. However, it isn't every day that you buy an ordinary table with a secret drawer which contains a loaded 32 caliber revolver. Marcy. I still say you should let me take that revolver to the police station. No. I intend to find this Mr. Evander Sutcliffe and return the gun to him. Uh, But you don't know what you could be getting into. What could I be getting into? I don't know. Which is why it might not be wise to go... Alex, I found Turdwood, Pennsylvania on the map. It's no more than a two-hour drive from here. Yeah, but still... I shall look up his address, knock on his door and say to him, Sir, I have something that belongs to you. Or maybe I won't do that. No? No. I, I'm going to play this entire thing by ear. Uh, no, Marcy. I'll just I, drive uh, to Turnwood and take it from there. T- t- take what from where for crying out loud? I'll wait for vibrations. Oh, no. You see, when I encountered that table at the flea market... Oh, no, no, look, uh, j- just a minute. Just wait. Now, you put this thing in perspective, will you? You encounter a person, you do not encounter an inanimate object. I understand that, but you see, something spoke to me from that table. Oh, now, darling, you you do have this talent. I know, and therefore, I should use it. Oh, all right, all right. Look, look, I have this meeting with the Zanesville group. Otherwise, oh, no, I'd no, go... Oh, no, 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 no. I, I must go there alone. I insist on it. <sighs> you know what you could do. You could go there and turn the gun over to the chief of police. Yes, I could. But then I'd never know what happened. Hi. (laughs) Hello. Uh, Cup of coffee, please. Anything else? No, thank you. I'm on a diet. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I should do, but I'd have to quit this job. You here on business? Why do you ask? Oh, I can't imagine why anybody want to come to a town like this on pleasure. Well, it does look like a very nice little place. Uh, well, it's little. Do, um, do you know a Mr. Evander Sutcliffe? Do I know a Mr... Why would you want to know? Oh, just curious. What's Mr. Evander Sutcliffe to you? Well, I have something that belongs to him. Huh? What? Well, now, why would you want to know? Well, Mr. Sutcliffe lives up on Barrow Hill, but he won't see anybody. Uh, maybe if you could tell me what it's all about, I could arrange something. Are you a friend of his? A very good friend. Well, thank you. I'll uh, let you know if I need your services. 
Yes, ma'am? Sheriff Phillips, um, I would like to ask you about a man named Evander Sutcliffe. Why? We see, I'm a reporter. A reporter? That's right. Could I see your credentials? Uh, credentials? Your press card. Oh, 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 I, I don't have one. You see, I'm, I, I'm not that kind of a reporter. No, no? No, I'm, a, I'm more or less a, um, a, a freelance writer. And you're on an assignment? Mm-hmm. From which magazine? Uh, well, truthfully, from none. I, it's just, well, if I can come up with a story that's interesting, I, I may have a chance to sell it. No, uh -huh. you're one of those writers that work on spec, is that it? Uh, spec, yes. Yes, uh, I suppose you could say that. What are you trying to do? Reheat the Dobler murder case? Well, I... I know you people. You sit around and look at all these unsolved murders, and every now and then you decide to take a flyer. What made you pick on Dobler? Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. All the evidence points to Sutcliffe. We're 99% sure Sutcliffe did it. It's just that one piece we can't fit into place. That's what's got you going, too, isn't it? Oh, oh, yes, sure. The one thing, the statute of limitations never runs out on murder. We'll get him. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you will. Listen, uh, I know how a lot of law enforcement people feel about the media, you know. Of course, I, I know. Well, I want to go on record right now. Not me. I don't feel you're interfering. I'm up a blind alley in this case. I welcome all the help I can get. You know, a uh, fresh perspective. You can get all the information over at the library. Tell Ruthie to give you all the back issues of the paper. It's about six years ago. And if you come up with anything, let me know, huh? Oh, oh, of course. And if she tries to give you a hard time, tell her I said so. Well, why should she want to give me a hard time? She's Evander Sutcliffe's niece. Well, what does that mean? Well, it can mean anything. It can mean nothing. That's the kind of case it is. And that's the kind of town it is. <laughs> The back issues of the town paper? Yes, if you please. Oh, I'm not sure we have them. I um, stopped by the sheriff's office. Oh, did you? And Sheriff Phillips advised me to come here where I could get all the information. Oh, well, I I'll look. Would you, please? You see, we keep a file of the local papers somewhere. Somewhere? Well, you know, a local small-town paper, it isn't very interesting... Hardly anybody reads it when it comes out, and so why would anyone want to read it years later? Even when it deals with murder? And we're so pressed for space. Do I gather that you don't want me to read the paper? Oh, whatever makes you say that? Well, then may I see it, please? Oh, excuse me, I I'll go in the back and look. Finished? Yes. Thank you. Oh, is there anything I can do to help? Well, as I understand it, there was bad blood between Evander Sutcliffe and Jonathan Dobler. Oh, you could say that. I gather a great many people like Evander Sutcliffe. Oh, he was a hero. And I gather many people thought Jonathan Dobler was a villain. Well, you could say that. What do you say? Well, Jonathan Dobler wanted to industrialize the town. Many of us felt that was bad. I gather from the paper that many of you felt it was good. There are two sides to every story. Well, that's true, but only one side can be right. Meaning yours? Well, Jonathan Dobler was an unscrupulous person. Oh, in what way? Well, he was wealthy. And he was able to put pressure on people. To do what? Vote for new zoning ordinances. Well, is that illegal? It's immoral. He tried to kill Evander Sutcliffe. Well, now, I didn't read about that. Well, you read where Joe Thorpe, who drives a truck for Dobler, collided with Evander's sports car. That was an accident. Was it? 
A big two and a half ton hitting that tiny car of Evander's? No, oh, Joe did it deliberately. Why? On orders from Jonathan Dobler. Jonathan plays rough. Or did. And that's why Evander has to spend the rest of his life in a wheelchair. Well, couldn't it have simply been an accident? I'm afraid you'll never understand. It's all part of a pattern of events. Even the way Sheriff Phillips arrested Joe Thorpe and violated his rights so the whole thing could never come to trial. Phillips worked it deliberately. How can you say that? Phillips is one of the smartest cops anywhere. He'd never make a stupid procedural mistake. But Jonathan Dobler owned him. Well, I have to keep asking for proof. Dobler held the mortgage on Phillips' house. Now, just a minute. Jonathan Dobler was president of the First National Bank of Turnwood. Therefore, the bank owned it. Jonathan Dobler was the bank. But Dobler was in Evander's living room when the shooting took place. That's right. He'd gone there to have a showdown. And that's where he was shot. Two bullets from a thirty-two caliber revolver. It was known that Evander Sutcliffe owned a thirty-two. He did. But it had been lost some time before. Yes, that's what he claimed. Whose side are you on? Well, I'm not on anybody's side. Well, you read what happened. I read what happened according to Evander Sutcliffe. They were having this discussion, and some prowler came into the house, tried to rob them, and Dobler tried to fight with him and was killed. You believe that? It has to be true. Why? Because Evander Sutcliffe said so? If Evander were lying, and he was the one who had shot Jonathan Dobler, what did he do with the gun? The gun? The gun, yes. He would have needed his thirty-two caliber gun. Oh, I see. Dobler was killed by two shots from a thirty-two. Phillips claims it was Evander's thirty-two, but without the gun, he can't prove it. I see. Evander simply couldn't have killed Dobler the way Phillips claims, because he'd have no way of getting rid of the gun. Oh. Here he was, tied to a wheelchair. What could he have done with the gun? How do you get rid of a gun? Oh, he could have uh, hidden it. Where? Somewhere in the room. Where? You just can't make something like a gun disappear. I can assure you, Phillips took that whole place apart. No gun. I see. So that's where the whole case falls apart. If Evander did it, where's the gun? <laughs> What would this seemingly quiet librarian say if she knew the gun in question was less than three feet away? More to the point, what would she do? There appears to be a little bit of an undertone running through this quiet small town, all as a result of a murder that was committed some six years ago. We shall await developments in Act Three. Usually, there's a basic requirement before there can be a prosecution for murder. You must have the corpus delicti, or to put it simply, the body in the crime. If we may be permitted to coin what sounds like a legal phrase, there are times when you must also have the armor delicti, or the weapon that did the deed. The weapon that killed Jonathan Doppler, the 32 caliber revolver, happens to be in the possession of our heroine, Marcy Virtue. But only she knows it, and we know it. Well, we can't tell anyone, but will she? Where's the gun? Where's the gun? That's the question. How could a man in a wheelchair get rid of a revolver? The answer? He simply couldn't. I understand. Well, thank you very much. Alex? Marcy, well, where are you? I'm still here in Turnwood. What are you doing there? Oh, Alex, darling, it is very complicated. Uh, no, you mean you're making it complicated. Why don't you just call on this fellow if he's still there and say, here's your gun? Well, I don't know if I should do that. Why not? 
Because this gun may have been used in a murder. Oh. Well, in that case, just go to the police and turn it over. Well, I don't know if I should do that either. Why not? Because I'd be taking sides. Marcy, what are you getting yourself into? I don't know, but I'm stuck. Oh, come home, will you? No, I'm in this deep. I'll see it through. See what through? I don't know yet. I'll call you later. Marcy! Goodbye, uh... dear. Well, come in, Miss Virtue. Have a seat. Thank you, Sheriff. Did Ruthie over at the library find the newspapers? Yes, she did. Yeah, I bet she gave you an earful, too, huh? <laughs> well. There were two sides in this town. One headed by Jonathan Dobler, the other by Evander Sutcliffe. To hear Ruthie, and some of them tell it, Dobler was an evil, grasping spoiler of the environment. And to hear you tell it? Jonathan Dobler was trying to save this town. From what? From itself. You see, Miss Virtue, there's no longer room in this world for what we used to call a small, unspoiled, old-fashioned hamlet. Who says so? Progress. Yeah, progress. Love it, hate it, but progress will have the last word. You know why? <laughs> You're telling it. Because people want things. They need things. Young people especially. They want things to do, places to go to, opportunities. Well, Dobler saw that. Sutcliffe didn't. Sheriff, what about the accident that put Evander Sutcliffe in a wheelchair for the rest of his life? What about it? Well, wasn't this fellow, uh, Joe Thorpe, driving a truck that belonged to Mr. Dobler when it struck Evander Sutcliffe's car? It was an accident. Truth of the matter is, it was Sutcliffe's fault. The truth? Joe Thorpe insisted that Evander Sutcliffe cut in front of him. According to the newspaper report, Evander Sutcliffe claims Joe Thorpe ran him down. Okay, let's say we have two conflicting stories. Why isn't Joe Thorpe's word just as good as Evander Sutcliffe's? Well, we can also ask why isn't Evander Sutcliffe's word just as good as Joe Thorpe's? So, uh, where are we? Look, whether or not Evander Sutcliffe was run down by Jonathan Dobler's employee has nothing to do with the main issue. Did Evander Sutcliffe shoot Jonathan Dobler? And you claim he did. If I had that thirty-two that belonged to Evander Sutcliffe, I could prove those two slugs came out of it. If I only could get my hands on that gun. That gun? Hmm. That's all I need. Marcy, will you please Just stop listen, Alex. No, 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 no. Now listen, you just turn that gun over to the sheriff. But if I do, Evander Sutcliffe will be convicted of murder. Well, why shouldn't he? He did it. The gun will prove it. Alex, suppose Evander Sutcliffe was telling the truth. How? He says the place was robbed while Jonathan Dobler was visiting yes, him. He says. But suppose it's true. Suppose the intruder had found the gun Evander Sutcliffe claimed to have lost. Suppose he used it to kill Dobler. But you found that gun in the secret drawer of the table. It is Evander Sutcliffe's gun. Yes, but how do we know it was Evander Sutcliffe's table? Why do the two have to be connected? Why can't a crook steal Sutcliffe's gun while he's robbing the house and use it to commit murder while he's making his getaway? Later on, this crook hides it in a secret table drawer. Marcy! For some reason, the table is sold while a gun is still in it. Marcy, you don't want this man, Evander Sutcliffe, to be guilty. If I can get that table back into Sutcliffe's house, then... Marcy, what are you talking about? Please, turn that gun over to the sheriff. Well, I can try one thing. Goodbye, Alex. Marcy! Hi. Hello. I help you? Oh, I'm I'm just looking, thank you. Okay, help yourself. This is um this is the only furniture store in Thornwood, isn't it? Oh yes. Uh, Jefferson's. My grandfather started it back in uh well, I guess it was the Roosevelt administration. Now, Teddy Roosevelt, that is. And he did more business than I do. My grandfather, I mean, not Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Well, you, uh, you have some lovely things here. Is there something in particular that you need? Oh, well, um, perhaps, um, a, a table. A table? A dining, kitchen, and, uh, occasional... Well, let me look at what you have. We have some very fine ones here. Uh, yes, I can see. Oh, wait. Right here, this one. Well, that small one? It's very plain. But it's very well made. Is it, uh... Imported? Oh, no, no, no. It's made right here in America by a very big outfit, Spurling Furniture out in Michigan. Uh -huh. Well, on second thought, it, it does appear to be a bit old-fashioned. It's one of those old, reliable models. Looks great anywhere. With uh, traditional furniture? Mm, blends right in. Some of the wealthiest people in town here bought them. Really? Yeah, I remember over the years I've sold them to the Dobblers. Well, he's dead now. The Smiths, the Olsons, the Sutcliffs, they're all traditional old-time money. Um, Dobbler, Sutcliffe, th those names are familiar. Why? Well, there was a murder case some time ago. Oh, I remember now. And you actually sold Mr. Sutcliffe a table just like this one? Same identical thing. It must have been all of 25 years ago. Mr. Sutcliffe? Uh, how did you get in here? Well, I rang the bell, but no one answered. Uh, that's because I did not choose to answer. Well, so I... I just walked in. Uh, now, you just be good enough to walk out and don't think that because I'm in a wheelchair, I'm helpless. Tell me your side of it. My side of what? The sheriff is convinced you murdered Jonathan Dobler. Well, I told my side of it to the coroner's jury. Yes, I know. I read it in the newspaper. Now tell me what happened to the table. What table? The small table with the secret drawer. Well, who are you? I have your gun. Oh. Is that all you can say? Oh? Uh, well, sit down. I was wondering when you'd show up. How did you know I'd show up? Oh, well, maybe not you, but someone... Because that would prove that uh, you don't get away with murder. You killed him, then? Uh, yes, yes. Why? Uh, I don't know why. At the time, it seemed so clear, cut. I, I thought he was going to destroy the town. But I see now neither of us could control that. I also thought he'd gotten Joe Thorpe to run me down deliberately. And did he? Yeah. We'll never know. Probably. <laughs> As we hated each other. Why? Why? Well, at first I... I thought it was politics. And then economics. You know... What form the town would take. Uh, we were both born here. Knew each other all our lives. And I just, just never got along. Why? You keep asking why... I don't know. It was just blind, unreasoning hatred. Maybe we each felt the town wasn't big enough for both of us. You know, hatred is an irrational state of mind. Don't try to find a rational reason for it. But what made you decide to kill him finally? Well, I thought he tried to kill me through Joe Thorpe's truck. So I arranged for the perfect crime. Here I am in a wheelchair, no no way of getting around. If I shot him and could hide the weapon, I'd be in the clear. And so you constructed a secret drawer in the table? Yes, yes, I prepared the ground quite well. I let it be known my revolver was missing. Then, as you say, I prepared the secret drawer. I asked him over here on some pretext. And you shot him? Well, I, I might not have done it. But then we got into a stupid argument, and I became furious. And then you shot him? Yes, 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 and I hid the gun in the secret drawer. But why did you get rid of the table later on, without removing the gun? Uh, well, that was the doing of my niece, Ruthie. I, I became ill after the shooting, and I, I had to go to the hospital. For years, Ruthie's been trying to get rid of what she called all the junk around here. And when I was hospitalized, that was her chance. 
When I came home, the table was gone. She dropped it off in some junk shop somewhere. And in my condition, I was unable to trace it. Uh, you can appreciate that. Yes. And I began to feel badly about killing Dobler. I hated him so much that I reckoned without my conscience. I wanted to confess. Why didn't you? Oh, how could I? If I told the story about the secret drawer and now it was gone, who'd have believed me? Not even Phillips the sheriff. I'd have been judged insane. I, I couldn't face that. My only hope was for someone to find the gun somehow. Well, I bought the table because I thought it was something else. I found the gun. It has your name on it. And so I came here to return it to you. You're not going to give it to the sheriff? Maybe you killed him because you thought it was self-defense. Or perhaps to repay him for putting you in a wheelchair, if he did. It might even have been a fit of uncontrollable anger. Only you know that. All I'm doing is returning your property. This gun belongs to you. You're... you're giving me this gun? It's up to you to do the right thing with it. Oh. I... I waited for you to come. And I dreaded your coming... Now, there's only one thing I can do. That's face the music. <sighs> Marianne, this is Evander Sutcliffe. Connect me with the sheriff's office, please. I'll be back shortly with a final thought. The name of our story was Let the Buyer Beware. And there's the old saying that goes The buyer needs a hundred eyes. The seller can afford to be blind. Well, no matter which side of the bargain you find yourself, buying and selling, if you stop to think about it, are what life is all about. And isn't the story of anyone's life the story of what kind of deal he or she was able to make? Our cast included Joan Lovejoy, Earl Hammond, Bryna Rayburn, and Robert Dryden. Associate Director, Marlon Swing. This is Hyman Brown, producer-director, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, then, pleasant dreams.